Come on, sweetie. Move. Move. Move, move. Some folks have been asking about our tiny wood stove and so I thought I would do, I would talk a little bit about it. Uh, it's December now and so we have been using this wood stove. We've been having fires since around September or so, um, but the fires we were having in September was like every probably like second or third day. Mommy, no, go let him. go let him. When I was shopping for a tiny wood stove, there was a couple things that I wanted to look for in a tiny wood stove. Um, the first one was that it needed to be good for like everyday daily use. Many of the tiny wood stoves that I was encountering online, if you, um, if you read through the manual, they actually say that it, it's not meant for daily use. Like it's meant to be, in like a, a camper or you know maybe um, maybe like a summer home or something to get you through a Canadian winter. The second requirement was that I needed an option to vent out the back because I wanted to use the top as a cooktop. Now there's advantages and like disadvantages to venting out the back. Um, the main disadvantage is that it takes um, some square footage away from your tiny space. Um, so because I vent out the back, um, my wood stove is pushed up like further than it would otherwise be. If I vented out the top, then my wood stove would be much, much, much closer to the wall. When I wanted the option to cook on the cooktop because, I mean, if I'm going to go through the trouble of lighting my wood stove um, and like burning fuel, I may as well be able to use that fuel for more than one thing. So this particular stove is uh, is from a website called uh, tinywoodstoves.com and they are an American company. Um, this particular model um, is uh, their dwarf like 4k is it 4KW or just 4K? I think it's just the 4K. So the door 4K, this one is the second largest wood stove that they had. Um, they there's so, so there's one wood stove that is larger than this one. Um, but I wanted this one because I didn't want a stove that was like so small that I couldn't fit like a Dutch oven on the top. Like I have a Dutch oven, it's really important that I fit can be able to fit like a large pot on this cooktop. <laughs> um, but I didn't want anything so large that it was going to like take too much away from our footprint. Some of the extras that we had on, so when you order your, your wood stove um, from like, you know, your, 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 um, your manufacturer or your supplier, um, you can have the option to get a bunch of extras. So the extras that we got were the additional heat shields on the side. So there's a heat shield here, and there's a, an additional heat shield right here. This stand is an extra that we got, and I'm really, really, really glad that we got it because when you live in a tiny space, um, I was thinking to myself that if I can utilize the space under my wood stove for you know things like firewood storage, um, that I was going to want to do that. And then the final extra that we got was um, we have a um, an outside, oh my gosh, what is it called? My brain is just dying right now. But basically it's like a rear like outside intake. When I bought this stove, um, so by the time I had narrowed my choices down, there was actually two wood stoves that we had in mind. And uh, some of the local tiny house builders, are, like in my area, uh, will use the Hobbit stoves. That's by Salamander Stoves. Uh, they are out of the UK. Um, and so I actually was going to order the Hobbit stove initially instead of the Dwarf stove. Um, the Salamander stoves, 
who's the manufacturer or the, the seller of uh, Hobbit stove, which is a stove that's incredibly similar in design. Like the Hobbit stove and this stove, which is like the Dwarf 4K, is almost like that they're incredibly similar. Um, the only difference that I saw was some of the, 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 the knobs and levers were like a little bit different. Um, the Hobbit stove had a bunch of like marketing and whatnot on their website that I really liked just in terms of like you can get you could get a certain Hobbit stove which was supposed to be more like environmentally friendly um, and so that was actually initially the stove that we were going to to get. Now the reason that we actually ended up going with the Dwarf uh, like 4K rather than the Hobbit stove was because the lead time for the Hobbit stove was going to be like significantly more than the lead time for um, for our Dwarf stove. Both places that I contacted, um, which was Salamander Stoves and Tiny like tinywoodstoves.com. They both had like really, really great customer service. They both responded to my questions like really, really quickly and they were both really helpful, really, really friendly. Um, but at the end of the day, we decided to go uh, with the door 4K because we could get it made and manufactured a lot faster and it also had less like distance to go with shipping. So the shipping for us would have been cheaper. So essentially the only difference was gonna go with the Hobbit stove. Um, if you have the Hobbit stove, please let me know. Like, I wanna know like, you know, what you like, what you don't like about your Hobbit stove. Um, there, I honestly don't have a whole lot of complaint. So I, I, I never had a wood stove before this stove. So I've, I've only ever had this stove, which is a tiny stove. Um, and the one thing that I don't like about this stove, and it's it's not a gripe about this stove in particular, I think it's just tiny wood stoves in general, that I didn't really think about, but also our house is so tiny. So anyway, um, most tiny home manufacturers around here, actually, that was snow falling on my roof. <laughs> There's like more snow falling everywhere. Um, so most tiny home manufacturers in my area actually don't recommend, like if they install a tiny wood stove into a tiny house, they don't recommend heating solely with the tiny wood stove. And I think the reason for that is probably the reason that I've discovered. And that is that in a tiny wood stove, your firebox is really small. Like my firebox is, it is a small firebox. <laughs> it's not large. Um, and as a result, it's the wood stove will only run by itself for maybe an hour, an hour and a half, maybe two hours, depending on the size of the logs that I have in, how far I have it like dampened down, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, if you're looking for a wood stove that's going to like heat your home all night and like run all night, there are ways that the tinywoodstove.com folks recommend. Um, such as, you know, um, maybe trying pellets or getting, um, some high BTU logs. I have not tried any of those, any of those things. Um, but I would say that's the only gripe I have about this stove. But again, that's not really a fault of this stove in particular. That's probably, it's most likely a problem with tiny wood stoves in general. Um, the wood stove shipped really really nicely um nothing was broken they recommend that when it ships you actually put it together right away and like have your first burn outside uh that way if there's anything broken or missing or anything uh the company can like the company has it insured so um but it shipped really well it was really really easy to put together we had our first burn really good it's really heavy it's made really really well so yeah i think that's honestly about all I have to say about this wood stove in particular, I do think it was a really, really good purchase for us. I'm looking forward to cooking on the cooktop a lot more.